Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are going to take a look at a Dothito rifle. This was a French design that was intended to compete against the Lebel rifle for the French uh, army. It was also very seriously considered by the French Navy. Uh, came really came like that close to actually being adopted by the French Navy, uh, as well as being tested by a bunch of other countries, including the United States at one point. Now, the designer of this rifle was a gentleman by the name of Louis-Marie Dodeto, who was born in France in 1845. He was pretty active in the Franco-Prussian War. He led a group of volunteer soldiers, uh, volunteer militia. I believe he was also active in the conflict of the Paris Commune. Uh, had a substantial military background and was quite the inventor and I think what would have been called at the time a mechanic. A guy tinkering with mechanical designs for stuff. Uh, he submitted a whole bunch of different guns to the French military establishment for consideration. Uh, everything from conversions of the Gras rifle to various types of magazine feed. Uh, he submitted some test machine guns, some semi-auto rifles, or at least one semi-auto rifle. So he was a pretty prolific designer, and eventually he came to the realization that none of his conversions of the Gras were going to gain any ground. The Gras was an obsolete rifle, and what the French military was were, would eventually move to would be something completely different from the Gras. So he moved on to doing some kind of oddball designs. Uh, most interestingly to me, anyway, in 1890 he actually developed a bolt-action rifle with a three-position selector switch, very much like the Mondragon of 1894 that would come later in Mexico. Uh, it was a design where you had a safe and a fire you know, setting on the selector switch that functioned as normal, but also had a rapid fire selector setting, and on that setting the rifle would fire as soon as you closed the bolt, which meant you could basically, it's, it's kind of like slam firing an 1897 pump shotgun. Uh, you didn't have to mess with the trigger. If you wanted to fire as rapidly as possible, you could set it to rapid and then just cycle the bolt as fast as you could. Interesting concept, never got adopted by anybody for reasons that are kind of obvious. Same reason the 1894 Mondragon never got adopted by anybody. Anyway, by 1891 he realized that really his best his best chances were going to lie with a fairly conventional rifle, and that's when he developed what basically was this rifle. Um, it is a bolt action. It has a lot of similarities with the Lebel and the Berthier. Um, the biggest difference, there are two main differences. One is that it has a stripper clip fed box magazine, holds five rounds, and all of the different iterations of this rifle shared that magazine design. And it uses a 6.5 millimeter cartridge, which I have a modern example of right here. Now, at the time, this was pretty controversial. And what's what I find really kind of entertaining is that it's exactly the same sort of controversy that we still see today with people discussing 5.56 versus 7.62 NATO cartridges, and how the bigger cartridge must be the better one because it must be more ballistically effective. It's got to have more killing power because it's a bigger bullet. Well, that may not be true, and that was exactly the same argument that was going on back in the 1890s when Dodeto was attempting to market this rifle. Um, in reality, his 6.5 millimeter bullet, which by the way was cartridge number 12, he went through a, a long process of, of iterating new cartridge designs for the rifle, and different versions of his guns use different cartridges. And This one, the most successful, was cartridge number 12. Um, it's a 6.5 millimeter cartridge. Uh, it use, fires a 147 grain bullet at like 2360 feet per second. That's 9.5 grams at 719 meters per second. So for the time, pretty high velocity, a good small bore cartridge. Uh, and it was several hundred feet per second faster. It was about a hundred meters per second faster than the French stand military standard 8 Lebel cartridge. So for Dodeto, his cartridge, what he saw was that his cartridge uh, was more lethal because it would destabilize and tumble when it hit a target and cause a pretty significant wound, which we now know today is entirely true. That's exactly what does happen. Um, he also knew that it had a, it was flatter shooting because it was higher velocity and a lighter bullet weight. So you had to, you were less dependent on adjusting your sights. The range at which you could just line up the sights and pull the trigger and get a hit was longer than with the 8mm Lebel cartridge. And lastly, it had better penetration. So this small diameter high velocity bullet would go through more obstructing materials, uh, be they fortifications or personal armor, than the 8 Lebel would. 
In fact, in 1894, uh, he was challenged by a guy who was making metal cuirass armor uh, for French troops. This guy had this design that he, he had found to be completely impervious to rifle rounds, and so he challenged Dodoteau to try it with one of these rifles. And while the 8 Lebel cartridge on this cuirass produced a 6mm dent in the metal, the 6.5 Dodeto went clean through the cuirass and then went through another 1.68 meters, so like 5 feet, of wooden backing that had been put up behind the armor. So this was a, an excellent penetrating cartridge. Unfortunately for Dodeto, the French bureaucracy and uh, military establishment was, the, the, bu the bureaucracy in the French military establishment is pretty legendary, and there was a lot of attachment to the Lebel rifle. Um, of course, by, 1890, by the 1890s, they manufactured a huge number of these rifles, and people were attached to it, careers were dependent on the Lebel being the good rifle and it being a wise decision. And so ultimately, when this was tested by the army, despite doing really well in pretty much all of the objective criteria, it was dismissed and dropped from competition because it didn't have a magazine cutoff. That was a nice technicality that was able to get it chucked out of the competition. The Lebel, of course, did have a magazine cutoff. You could hit the switch and leave the magazine full and single load it. Um, interestingly, the Berthier did not. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit distracted from the history of this particular gun. Uh, there are three main models of these, the A, the B, and the S. Uh, the A came first, and production began at the, at the Saint-Denis arsenal outside of Paris in 1893. Uh, the, this, the, the earlier prototypes, all of uh, Dodeto's earlier guns had been produced by the Saint-Chamon arsenal, which is kind of in southwest, southeastern France. Um, but SFAP, uh, the Société Française de Armes Portatifs, was a, a manufacturing conglomerate a cooperative establishment that was set up outside of Paris, and, and this was one of the first rifles that they actually produced. So they started with the Model A, which is basically this same design. Um, bolt action, they made both full-length rifles and carbines. The rifles had straight bolt handles, the carbines had bent bolt handles, and then they varied slightly in, obviously, length and weight. Um, the, the B model was introduced in 1894, and it was basically just a simplification to make the guns a little more, a little easier, a little more efficient to produce. Um, I know one of the elements that they changed was the extractor. I don't have a, a good description of how the extractor was changed, and unfortunately I don't have uh, an A or B here to show you, but I do have an S, and the S is kind of interesting because there are only a couple hundred of them made, and it turns out that these were actually a series that were manufactured for the French Navy. So the French Army, as I said, had tested these. The Navy also tested them. The Navy was pretty interested. Uh, specifically, the Navy was interested in equipping colonial marine troops with these rifles. And in 1895, 1896, they bought a couple hundred of them and shipped them to Indochina for pretty extensive field trials. This would be as close as these rifles ever got to actual adoption. Um, at the end, those trials ended not because the rifle was bad, but because those colonial marine troops ended up being incorporated into the French army. And because the army and the navy were separate bureaucratic organizations, once, while they had a chance of adopting a rifle like this in the navy, once they were part of the army, they were subject to army procurement and they got Lebels or Berthiers. So after that trial, apparently some of these rifles were shipped back to Louis Dodeto, and um, what my understanding is, he actually, his family kept a bunch of them, and after World War II, they needed money to rebuild, uh, I believe their destroyed house and property, and so they sold a bunch of these rifles, and that's how uh, the ones that are in the United States today, like this one, ended up over here. So they were sold for funding after World War II. So pretty cool. Um, why don't we go ahead and take a closer look at this guy? And I'll show you the differences between it and the Berthier, because it does look very similar. Starting off with some of the markings here. Uh, on the top we have a shield with an S. On the A and the B models you'll find an A and a B, uh, A or a B, in that shield. Uh, below that we have a serial number, which is 144. And this is a mismatched gun, so the bolt has a different number. Um, I believe serial numbers on the S models go up into about the 600s. Um, and then we have a crest below that. On the right side of the receiver, we have a stylized cannon right here, as seen from the top, and Saint-Chamon marking. That was uh, one of the French Ordnance factories. 
and while this gun was manufactured at Saint-Denis, it appears that it was actually uh, fitted or, or the, some of the last steps of assembly were done at saint chamond probably because this was actually being done for a uh, French Navy contract. Here on the left side of the front of the receiver we have SFAP, that's Société Française d'Armes Portatives, uh, French Society for Portable Arms, and Saint-Denis, which is the location of the arsenal where it was manufactured. And lastly, on the back of the receiver, we have Dodeto's uh, name, his signature there. And you'll find that on a, all of these rifles. The rear sight is going to be very similar to that of the Berthier carbines. Um, nothing really particularly special going on there. If we look on this side, we can see that the steps on the rear sight are 2, 4, 6, 8, and 1,000 meters. The front sight is a V-style barleycorn, which is kind of unusual for French military arms of this period. Uh, the Labelles and the Berthiers had very narrow square posts in the front. And then we also have some typical French uh, elements on the muzzle, or on the, the nose cap. We have a stacking swivel here, or a stacking rod, so that you can stand several of these rifles up together. And then we have a clearing rod. You'll notice that there is no slot in the head of this rod. It's not actually meant for cleaning, uh, it was meant for knocking out a stock cartridge case, should you get one. And that's threaded down the stock and disappears into the receiver there, uh, threaded in place so that it doesn't come out. The front sling attachment is this very typical ring like you would find on Berthier's. Alright, then the action itself. First, I do want to point out an interesting quirk of this particular rifle, and this is known this is not the only one like it. This is known on other S pattern uh, Dodetos. This is actually in a Berthier stock. So normally the uh, the line of the stock would be flat across here. This one has this kind of pregnant belly look uh, that was originally there to fit against the Berthier's three round magazine. Just for comparison's sake, here is an Indochina Berthier with that exact same stock. That does make sense given French Indo-Chinese use of these guns. This probably had a broken stock at some point, and Berthier stocks were available, and so one of them was probably uh, fitted to the gun as a replacement in Indochina. On the back here we have our safety. This is the fire position. This is actually for disassembly. You can see how that's camming this spring-loaded piece out slightly. What that does is pull out the bolt release um, and allow you to remove the bolt. Much simpler, by the way, than the Lebel and the Berthier, where you have to actually unscrew the screw that holds the bolt head into the bolt body and then take them apart separately. This much simpler system. And then, all the way up, like that, is the safe position. So when it's in safe, you can see right in here, it actually locks the bolt in place. So I can't open the bolt, and if I pull the trigger, the safety lever here holds the striker, holds the cocking piece in place. One additional interesting feature of the Do de Toe system is this little lever right here. When I lift the bolt you'll see that that lifts, that retracts inward. Uh, that is actually there to help the magazine function. So if I take this out you will see that there are actually two spring-loaded catches in the magazine. And it's a little difficult to tell from this angle, but this one is up top. That is the, the feed lip, basically. That's as far up as a cartridge can go. And so the bolt, the, a cartridge will come up to here, sit in position, and then be pushed forward up into the chamber by the bolt. However, we also have this one down below. That is an interrupter. So. The first cartridge is sitting up here, the second one is held down in this position, uh, much like a Mosin the Gaunt works. And the reason for this is that the cartridge has a, a fairly substantial rim. It's not as bad as 8 Labelle, but it definitely does have a rim to it, and having an interrupter like that ensures that you won't ever have problems with rim lock, because the rim of the top cartridge is far enough above the second round in the magazine that they can't interfere with each other. That is a, a very important element in uh, uh, it's thoughtful on the part of Dodeto. Unfortunately on this bolt there, there is a screw that connects the bolt head. So the bolt head is removable if you need to replace the extractor or anything. Unfortunately on this one the top of the screw has been sheared off, so 
I can't take it apart to show you. But um, we do have a vent hole right here, and when this is in the gun, that vent hole lines up with this notch in the receiver, and that's there so that if you have a, a ruptured case, gas will vent out here instead of going back into the shooter's face. So that's a, a good safety uh, element. Just for comparison's sake, here's an 8 Lebel cartridge. This is a modern Pervy Partisan one. And here is a modern recreation of uh, 6.5 Dodeto. So uh, 6.5 by 53.5 millimeter. Uh, for today's production, these are actually relatively easy to make out of 7.62 by 54 rimmed Russian brass. Uh, and by the way, this, this is a 54R converted case. Uh, the neck, the shoulder here, will actually move up a little bit the first time this round is fired, uh, because it will be fire formed in a dos de toe chamber. So normally shoulder would be a little bit farther forward. However, you can see that this cartridge has substantially less taper than the Lebel. The original versions did actually have an extractor groove in the brass. This one doesn't because it's made out of 54 rimmed brass, but uh, while this wasn't a perfectly rimless case, it was substantially better than 8 Lebel, in addition to having a much smaller diameter bullet. Uh, although overall they are basically the same same size cartridge. So while Dodeto didn't end up having any luck with military adoption of his rifle, uh, despite being tested by French Army, French Navy, the US, China, Japan, Romania, Chile, Mexico, uh, probably a couple other countries as well, uh, he did actually have a fair amount of commercial success as a sporting rifle. Uh, these were marketed by uh, Manu France and Saint Etienne, and they were in the catalogue for sale to civilians there until World War I, and were reasonably popular guns, uh, both in the 6.5 cartridge and then in other cartridges as well. The gun was also manufactured in a variety of other sporting cartridges. You could get this in 405 Winchester, you could get it in 303 British, you could get it in 8mm Lebel, um, as well as other cartridges. So uh, the primary trade name of this was Rival, or Rival, I suppose, pronounced Frenchly, uh, and under that guise there, there were pretty successful guns. They were very nice hunting guns, and, and people really liked them quite a lot. So uh, not a bad second place sort of finish. If you enjoy this sort of content, please do consider checking out uh, my account on Patreon. It is donations of a buck a month from folks just like you watching that makes it possible for me to continue to do this full time and at the, the rate that I do. Uh, this is the first in what will be an on and off again series of videos on French rifles. I have a whole bunch of those that I am excited to bring to you guys. So figured we'd start with this one that didn't quite make the military cut. Thanks for watching.